Hello everyone, Mr. Lipchick here, and our topic for discussion today will concern the growth of Christianity. Initially, there were more writings passed down about the life of Jesus than are contained in the current New Testament. The books that were not used are known as the Apocrypha. These books are studied by scholars to learn more about the different branches of early Christianity that developed. Modern Christianity has evolved through the interpretation of the New and Old Testaments by religious scholars and officials. As Christianity spread throughout the Roman Empire, it would evolve into many distinct churches. Coptic, Orthodoxy, which can be found in Egypt, Roman Catholicism, Greek Orthodoxy, Armenian Apostolic Church, Ethiopian Orthodoxy, and many others. An important belief in Christianity is the need to spread the religion and baptize new followers. The Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament describes, and, uh, describes the travels of Jesus' followers as they converted people to Christianity. The Apostle Mark traveled to Alexandria, Egypt in 42 CE. In 47 CE, the Apostle Paul traveled to Western Anatolia and modern-day Turkey. The area was populated by Greeks, as the Turks would not settle there until centuries later. Paul would also travel to Greece and Rome. Paul was martyred in Rome when sentenced to death by the Emperor Nero and beheaded. Christianity eventually spread throughout the known world, reaching as far as Rome, Britain, Asia, and North Africa by the end of the 5th century CE. The Bible would be translated into Greek, Roman, and many other languages. It would have a powerful impact on the Roman Empire, where it was initially a small, persecuted religious minority. Christianity was initially outlawed in Rome. Romans were mostly polytheistic, worshipping many gods, to include Jupiter, god of sky and thunder, Juno, protector and special counselor of the state, Minerva, goddess of handicrafts, Mars, god of war and guardian of agriculture, Apollo, god of, god of light, healing, and prophecy, Diana, goddess of the hunt, Venus, the goddess of love. The Romans adopted gods and goddesses from conquered territories such as Greece and Egypt. The Romans also worshipped emperors as gods. Christians refused to place incense on the altar of the emperor, causing Rome to see them as a threat. After Rome burned during Nero's reign, he blamed the, blamed the Christians. He burned them as human torches at his banquets um, in, as a reprisal. However, this only created sympathy for the Christians among the Romans. Persecution of Christians fluctuated in severity during the late Roman Empire. The harshest persecution took place under the Emperor Diocletian and his appointed co-emperor Maximian during their reign. Churches were closed and books were burned. Christians hid in a series of tunnels under Rome known as the Catacombs, where the Romans buried their dead. You can still find the Catacombs if you visit Rome. Two Romans, Galerius Constant Constantinius Chlorus, uh, sorry, Galerius and Constantinius Chlorus, shared the office with Diocletian and Maximian in what was known as the Tetrarchy. Uh, they were two junior emperors, or Caesares, 
uh, chosen from chosen to become emperors upon the deaths of Diocletian and Maximian. Maximian. This system didn't work very well, by the way. Diocletian himself was not anti-Christian, but his actions were instigated by Galerius, who was appointed Augustus or junior emperor during his reign. Although they were initially mistreated, Christians became accepted and grew in Rome. Christianity grew. People were attracted to the ideal of an afterlife as a reward for living morally during this life. Christianity, unlike the Roman religions, held that all souls are the same. The lowliest person's soul was equal to that of the emperor. The persecution of Christians forced them to become more organized. The Christian church created a group of leaders known as the clergy. Bishops took control of the Christian communities. Ordinary church members, or laity, followed their religious edicts. Galerius eventually became ill and attributed it to possible retribution from the Christian God for the persecutions. In 311 CE, he issued the Edict of Toleration. Galerius also believed that the policy of persecution designed to repress Christianity had failed. The religion continued to spread even while Christians were persecuted. Christianity had a powerful appeal to the people. Life in this time period was difficult and often very short. In addition to an afterlife and spiritual equality, it offered communities committed to helping one another. It advocated protection of the weak, the care of widows and orphans, and feeding the hungry. Rome would grow in its toleration and acceptance of Christianity. By the end of the Roman Empire, it would become the official state religion. It would spread throughout Europe and become the dominant religion there. Its ideas and principles would shape cultures and governments for centuries. That concludes our discussion on the growth of Christianity. Thank you for attending, and I look forward to seeing you in the near future. Have a great day.